So I've done my research and when we're improving the muscles that we work on when we're drumming, there's a couple of areas that are mainly active when we're playing. And that's the shoulders, the triceps, the forearms, the calf muscle and the shin muscle. Now, if we work on these muscles in the gym, are we going to get better? I mean, straight away, we work on these muscles, we're not going to get faster, we're not going to get better. But in the long term, if you work on these muscles, I do believe you'll improve in certain areas. For instance, one, your fatigue. You'll push back fatigue when you're playing live. That's a given because the muscles are going to be stronger. You're going to prevent yourself from injury because there's mo those muscles are going to be a lot more stronger. And the one I think that is most important is that you are basically developing that muscle. You're waking that muscle up. That muscle has now become more active than it has been before. And when an, a muscle is way more active, the muscle memory improves. So whatever you're developing in your drumming style, and it's related to one of those muscles, well, if you work on it, the improvement is gonna happen faster because the muscle memory is gonna, it's a lot quicker. For instance, if you're working with your foot technique, say for instance, you're working with heel up, well, a lot of that comes from your calf muscle. If you're working heel down, it's gonna be on the shin muscle. Have a look at these two exercises that will help you with both the shin and the calf muscle. So what I suggest for the shin is throw out a towel flat on the floor and with the same distance to where your foot pedal would be, put your foot down and just start gathering the towel with your toes. Just continue doing that until you run out of towel and then take up the towel and start the whole process again. You'll start feeling that workout within 30 seconds to a minute. And it's amazing how much of a workout you get from something so simple. The thing is, when you're working on the shin muscle, it's quite difficult to find an exercise other than just playing the heel down technique. This will definitely help you with fatigue. So if you're looking to go longer with the heel down, of course you can practice just heel down on its own. But this is a good added exercise that's gonna help with fatigue on those muscles. A great workout for the calves are the calf raises. Now I'm using a machine, you don't have to, you can use a step. And what you wanna do is you wanna just get the ball of the foot on that base plate of the machine or the step. And the idea of this is that we're getting a good stretch in the calf before we even start to lift. And so from there, what we're going to do is we're gonna shoot up and just go on our tippy toes. And then we're gonna bring it back down and then again, we've got that nice stretch because our heel is going below the ball of our foot. Now you can do this just standing up, just going on your tippy toes. You will get some work, but you won't get a full uh, workout like I'm showing here. Keep it simple, three sets, 10 to 12, um, and don't go heavy on the weight if you're using the machine. So on our first drum lesson, you know, you sit down on the drum seat and you get told, okay, relax your shoulders, relax them, okay, pick up the drumsticks and, and off you go, you start playing. You notice when my shoulders are completely relaxed, but I pick up the drumsticks, the shoulders kind of pop up a bit. So you are effectively holding up your hands with your shoulders while you're drumming. Yeah, that's the, the, the muscle that gets engaged for that. Um, also remember that when you're going around the drum kit for fills, for hitting cymbals and stuff, and when you're moving, it all comes from the shoulders. So shoulders play a huge part when you're drumming. The thing is, well, if you're playing a two hour show, two and a half hour show, three hour show, you're gonna be in that position, held up, holding up your hands, moving around the drum kit. It all comes from the shoulders. It's an easy thing to get fatigue, especially after a long show. So working on these shoulders, building that muscle, and I'm not just talking about one side, we're talking about the front and the sides, can really push fatigue back. Here's two exercises that will work, not just the front, but also the side of the shoulder. Let's do the side lateral raises. And what we're doing here is we're working the side of the shoulder, the side of the deltoid. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift up from the side, keeping the arm nice and straight, and go up as far as the shoulder. Now, we don't wanna start this movement off like this, all hunched over. What we wanna do is we wanna bring it up, just like I'm doing there, and squeeze the back of the shoulder blades. Once you're in that position, you're ready to go. You wanna bring it controlled all the way up or even a burst all the way up, but don't go higher than your shoulder because you can damage your rotator cuff. And basically keep that way all the, all the way. So from the, from the bottom, we're controlled all the way up and definitely control it on the way down. Start at maybe four kg if you haven't done this in each hand and then go eight to 10 reps if you need to add more weight. Do, but don't really go over eight to 10 kg. So the second exercise we're gonna look at here is the front lateral raise. In terms of posture, we keep it exactly the same as the side lateral raise. The only difference between the two is that we're raising the dumbbell in front of us here. 
So what we want is a nice controlled up motion and a very controlled down motion. Um, both of them going up and going down will affect the muscle. Um, again, don't lift it higher than the shoulder. You want to look after your rotator cuff. And again, start very low weight. So start at four, eight to 10 reps. You want to do three sets of that. Um, and if that's not challenging enough, move up in the weight. The idea of these two exercises, you just want a nice overall uh, workout for the shoulder. Um, and it's going to work the fronts and the sides. Working the forearms, everybody thinks that when you work the forearms, it's about getting a tight grip. Tight grip on drumsticks, that's the last thing we want. We want a nice loose grip. But what I have found that working on the forearms has helped me improve the wrist and by just strengthening it. And you know, this is the number one spot that drummers get injury is in the wrist. So by strengthening that, by doing forearm exercises, it's only a good thing. Um, one of the other things that I think are very important is working the tendons. So when you're doing forearm exercises, you're working the top, but you're also working down here. And what's, do, what, what, what's happening there is it's the, same, it's the same muscles you use for finger technique. You're doing French grip on the drumsticks. So it's gonna work hand in hand with that. So that's one way that's really gonna improve. Beware though, when you're doing these exercises, keep the weight down if you're using weights with it, um, because you don't wanna injure your forearms. Um, and it's not one of these things that you'll be out for months. It's just, it's clear. When you do these exercises, it's clear the next day that you've worked your forearms. So if you have a big gig coming, maybe the day before isn't the time to do forearm exercises, but give them a go. Here's a couple of exercises that will definitely help. So this first one, we don't even need any weights. We can literally do it with just our hands. This one's called picking cherries. And the idea is we throw our hands out and then with our fingers, we bring them into the fist, give it a little squeeze and throw it out. Basically, we're pretending that we're picking up cherries. Now, this may look a little silly, but do this for 30 seconds, do it for one minute, and you will start feeling the burn in the forearms. And the great thing about it is, is that it's very difficult to injure yourself doing this because you're not applying a lot of weight. It's a great exercise for the forearms. So this one, we're actually using a dumbbell. This one's called the dumbbell roll. And I really can't stress this enough. Use a very light weight because you do not want to injure your forearm or the tendons around it or anything like that. But with a light weight, you should be fine. Again, you're thinking about time limits, 30 seconds to a minute, something like that. Um, how this exercise is done is you simply have the dumbbell in your hand and from the palm of your hand, you let it roll down to the tips of the fingers and then you bring it back up and give it a little squeeze. It's working on the wrist, it's working on the forearm. And you continually do that with a very, very light weight down by your hip and you just go to town for a certain amount of time, 30 seconds to a minute, and you'll really start to feel that burn. Hugely important when you're drumming is your posture. I think we all know that, or at least we try to get good posture. Now, this is not on my research that what I'm about to show you. I'm going to talk about the back to improve your posture. This is just something I have found through the years. Uh, there's ways, loads of different ways of, of, of improving your posture. You can do yoga, running improves your posture, but I found working on the back muscles um, will improve it. And it doesn't improve it to immediately make you sit upright. But what it does is, I think because you put more weight on your back from the actual weightlifting, is that you notice when you're leaning forward on the drum kit and it becomes uncomfortable. And so you want to, you know, get pr proper posture when you're sitting on the drum kit. It just feels better. Whether when there's no weight on the back, you kind of lounge forward and you don't notice. But putting that weight on the back seems to make me at least sit up have a look at these two exercises here that, that'll work on the back muscles. To improve the posture while working on the back, we've got to keep thinking about the posture. So make sure that we're in good posture when we're using the machines. Both of these exercises that I'm going to show are on the machine. This one is a lat pull down. Basically, we're sitting down and we're pulling down from the top to about our chest and then we're going back up, controlling both coming down and coming back up. We're working on the side of our back here. Now, sometimes you see people and they're leaning back like this. I don't think that's a good idea. Keep the back straight for this exercise. And that's the same for the second one we're gonna look at here, which is the seated row. So with a straight back, what we're doing is we're literally pulling in the weight as far as our stomach and we're letting it go back out, controlling it every step of the way. 
we're working in the center of the back just a little bit on the top so the upper back and when we're bringing it in to our chest our center area what we want to do is we want to just pause there for a minute and then let it back out again working on that posture making those muscles very strong so that it doesn't get fatigue it's funny when people think about power they generally think about the bicep that that's where it comes from um, and it does, but only when you're pulling. Think about it, if you're lifting a weight to get a bicep curl, you have to pull to engage the muscle. But if we're going out like this, like we are as drummers, generally that muscle is, well it's not generally, it is coming from the tricep. That's where it comes from. So if you're looking for that power to throw down work on the tricep, there's nothing wrong with having a little, you know, little weight behind your plane. Um, also, it comes from the stretching. So if you, if you want to go out for your toms, if you want to go out for your cymbals, it all comes from the tricep. So working on the tricep, very beneficial, very linked to a lot of the stuff in drumming. Have a look at these exercises that will help work on the tricep. So the one I'm showing you here is called the tricep kickback. And there's a number of ways of actually doing this. The best way for me, I found, was to lower the head um, until you're slightly bent over. And I'm using something for a bit of stability here with the opposite hand. And I'm basically looking from my hip to my neck and it's a nice straight line. Basically, I bring up the weight to my chest and then I kick back and that's simply it. So you let you control it all the way back and you bring it back in. The dumbbell should be roughly where your shoulder is, roughly where your chest is, somewhere along that. And you just kick it back. Again, keeping the weight quite low. Just see what you're up for. Uh, four kg start off, eight to 10 reps, three sets, and you're good to go. Okay, so these exercises for the triceps are all tricep extensions. This particular one that we're looking at is the, the overhead dumbbell tricep extension. Um, and what we want to do is right at the beginning when we're starting off is get that good stretch on the tricep and then when we lift up we want to squeeze it at the top keep the weight really really low 2 kg at the beginning 8 to 10 reps 3 sets and you're done and once you're done you flip it over to the other hand and you do the exact same thing so you have a choice with the hand that you're not working on whether you put it at the back of you or you can have it at the front it's up to you and then basically with the dumbbell you want to bring it to the opposite shoulder of the one you're working on and sometimes some people just leave it at the back of their head either or and then you want to extend the arm all the way up and then control it all the way down so the exact same thing control it up and control it down look do you need perfect posture to play the drums no do you need to work on these exercises to become a better drummer no but working on these exercises, working on these muscles, at least to have a small little bit of knowledge about this, will help you wake up those muscles. It's gonna help you with fatigue for sure, no doubt. It's gonna help you push back and prevent injuries, definitely. And arguably, and I still think this is the most, the, the best reason why you would want to do this, is that you are waking up the muscle. That muscle is now a lot more active. Therefore, the muscle memory improves. Therefore, when you're developing something, like I said at the beginning, and it's linked with that muscle, the, the, you're gonna get better. It's gonna, your improvement's gonna, gonna become faster. And that's reason enough to definitely just keep an eye on the muscles and keep them ticking over. You don't have to be a beast, but it's no harm to work on these kind of things. Um, let me know if you have any exercises that I haven't shown here, especially if you have any for the shin, because I couldn't find an awful lot for the shin muscle, and it's an area that I really need to work on. So let me know down in the comment section. Let me know down in the comment section if you think I'm talking out of my hat. Exercise has nothing to do with the drums, that this video was a waste of time. I'm not precious about it. Just let me know down in the comment section. Also, what I'll do is I'll leave a link in the description to the website with a little bit more information on the weights and the number of reps you have to do for each of those exercises. Other than that, see you next week. Hit a like on the video, comment, let me know what you think. Take it easy. Have a good one. Bye bye. Guys, hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And if you like what you've seen here today, you can see a lot more videos. Just click on any of them here on the screen.